Good afternoon. Welcome to Living Mosaic, a program of the Spark of Humanity Network. My name is Martha Holden, and I am a member of the Spark of Humanity Network. The impetus behind this project is, well, the pain, the horror, the ugliness of the world, parts of it in ways, aspect, certainly. And we've come to believe, as we've continued developing the spark of humanity insight, which is that there's a spark of humanity in each one of us, every one of us, regardless of their being defended or distorted or baffled, we've come to understand that to this ugliness, there is a solution. And we are envisioning that solution as a living mosaic a mosaic in which we each, for it to be a solution, we each have a unique and essential role within the mosaic. And this program is a hope to support us all in living into that reality and supporting others as we are drawn away from our fear and towards an attraction to our role within the mosaic. We're coming to understand that the ugliness, which is a fear, a spiral of fear and resistance and reaction, is a result is because we are currently experiencing an evolutionary surge, let's call it, in the field of consciousness, or in the dimension of consciousness, perhaps towards, you know, who can explain it, right? Not me, but a growth towards, let's say, conscious community with all, not just human beings, all created life, all created being, all creation. And that, not surprisingly, um, it's something we can't control, evolution. We participate in it. If we have our wits about us, we adapt to it, which is about this se session today is about, is about adaptation. But we cannot control the evolution but, but so people are afraid and they respond in ways that generate a spiral of reactivity and ugliness eventually. So what we can, what we can change is our part in the human response to this under, undergoing, undergirding change that's happening that we don't have any control over we can choose to participate in it with, with adaptation. We can choose to dance with it, or we can choose to blame each other and pout and hide under the covers. And we can choose, you know, just look around. We can see how we ch can choose to respond. But through the, through the living mosaic, vision option, we can begin to interact with reality as it comes towards us. We can begin to respond to our environment, to what's happening to us personally, intimately, or in our community, families, communities wider, in a way that allows us to become more fluid in our response, and so in a sense we are flowed toward, use it as a transitive verb, why not, right? We're flowed toward our role within the mosaic. And looking at the concept of adaptation, we, in biology you may have learned, I did, that when, you know, the the species, the individuals, the systems that adapt, survive. 
and those that don't go extinct. The dinosaurs could not adapt quickly enough to the planetary changes in their era, so they went extinct. A question that some of us, some of my friends certainly raise is, can humanity, can we, can we adapt wisely enough, compassionately enough, humanely enough to make the human experiment on this planet a sustainable enterprise? So, I mean, we can get really tied up in panic about that, worrying. It's such a big question. I have a friend who develops timelines about, well, we need to do it by this time or that, you know, we need a whole shift in human consciousness in order for us. That's not what we're doing here. We're saying that we each are a unique Unique, each one of us, distinct, unique, with a unique vision, a unique gift, a unique capacity, and essential. We are each a unique part of the solution, of this capacity to shift so that this enterprise becomes more sustainable. So how do we do that? Well, that's a basic premise of this project is that it starts with us. You know, like one of my friends sings, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be adaptation. Let there be adaptation on earth and let it begin with me. Or, yeah, oh. all earth. So, not just the human <laughs> enterprise, all earth. So how do I adapt? How do we adapt? How does one adapt? I can't make it happen. I don't, you know, the buttons that I should push in order um, to adapt. I, I, I'm not getting your messages or something. What, uh, some, Lindsay, somebody's could talking. You call back. Uh, Pardon? Uh, involved in a Zoom. Oh, okay. Talking to someone else. We cannot make okay. ourselves adapt. Uh, yeah. The mosaic. Okay. One of the premises of the mosaic I, is that the mosaic is alive and it's evolving. And being alive, I think of it the way I understand it, the way I conceive it, it, it desires, it has an instinct for life, it wants to survive the mosaic. And so it breathes maybe and maybe it inhales us toward our toward our optimal role, to our needed role within the mosaic. However I want to think about it, whatever images you use or I use, we use, there's something that draws us or flows us toward our needed role in the mosaic. And that, that process, that dynamic, is what's adapting us. We don't do it to ourselves. We become willing, we become available, we become willing, as willing as we can be. I often talk about, well, maybe we need to become willing to become willing. How willing are we to let ourselves become part of the solution here? And that means often I find letting go of our old ideas, the, the images, the, the habits of thought and of response, the concepts that we cling to because they seem so essential to who we are, to our identity, we cling to these stories, these concepts, these habits, these whatever, because we think we need them in order to survive. But are we willing to just sort of think, well, maybe I've been doing that. I've been thinking that way all my life. And here I am. You know, I'm 
20, 40, 60, 80, however old I am, maybe I'll try something different. I'll try letting go of those or being willing to let go of those, let them sort of be as the be caught up in the draft as it as I move forward, it's sort of like that stuff sloughs off me, those ideas, those habits, so that I am more willing and supple and available to be flowed, inhaled, to be drawn toward where I am needed. Because where I am needed within this mosaic or it can be a dance. If you prefer the dance rather than mosaic as an image, where I am needed is the only place I'm going to be truly comfortable. I can think, and there's a lot of this going on, I've, we see it all around, that if I am more secure and more strong in my identity, who I am, my sense of myself, if I'm clinging to that with all the fervor and strength of my character, that I'll be comfortable. Well, it's just like having money. You know, there's never enough. We never have enough. We always want more. If we want to be comfortable, we need to be willing to let go of our ideas of money, you know, our attachment to it. Let go of our ideas of our identities, who we are, what we're good at, where we needed to be, to become more fluid, more fluent, more... An image that I used, I don't think I've used it in the last couple of weeks, so let's try it again, is like ideally it's like a flag waving in the wind, that it's available fully available to the wind and just sort of flows as the wind moves it. And our fear and our sense of needing to hold on to where we are and who we are and what we believe in is like a hand clenching the fabric so it cannot flow freely. And it's to become willing to begin to let go of our clench on the fabric, begin to let it be free and begins to slowly, subtly sh open up, shift, permeate, make more permeable our consciousness, our awareness of others around us, of different situations, of gently just, you know, it's for those of you who spend time on their screens looking at horrible, tragic, ugly things. Um, maybe that you want less awareness rather than more because it seems like there's so much out, of, out there that if we're aware of it or paying attention to it, it's painful. I, it cripples me. It's, it's, you know, I just want to hide under the covers, denial or despair. You know, that's, that seems to be the only option is denial. Don't look at it. Go shopping. Have a drink. You know, buy another sailboat, whatever. Denial or despair, I can't handle it, seems to be the only option. But that's because we're, what we're choosing to be paying attention to. There's plenty to be paying attention to that does not call out denial and despair. So it's, it's take, developing a habit of, of opening up our consciousness to not what the mass media and social media are you know, trying to get at us, except, of course, with this show on Orca Media, um, or anything Orca Media does, I'm sure, is just perfect but not getting into that, but opening up so we become aware of what else is the underlying truth, the underlying harmony, the, the way things are moving and shifting and flowing, spending more time, time outdoors, 
in the unmediated environment is very good because, because nature is much closer to its place in the mosaic than we are if we're on screens and watching television and reading the newspapers all the time. It's, it's to be available for the adaptation toward this shift in consciousness that we don't shift our consciousness, but we are available to have it shifted in whatever way is needed. We don't know. We don't know, but we can trust that there is a wisdom of something. Rather, the way I think of it, because I'm bone deep selfish, is that whatever this is, what it wants of us human beings is its own wholeness. It wants its wholeness. It wants its fulfillment. It wants its wholeness. And because we are, as part of that, we are inextricably part of that, we can't separate ourselves off from that, that we are drawn toward our fulfillment, our wholeness, as part of this cosmic, movement toward wholeness. So there's the, the subtle underlying, it's like an aquifer. Down there just are flowing in one direction. The, the aquifer of living truth, I think of it at times. Just to be, allow ourselves to become aware that there is a life, if we want to think of it that way, there's a power, there's a force, there's, there's something subtle and real that's operational and of which we are a part, of which we are expressions, like pseudopods on a cosmic amoeba. And we're each sort of going out into the unknown, each of us pseudopods. This has never been done before. So it's scary, right? But we can have a sense of comfort in, oh, we're just part of something bigger, something very big, something that is so big that it dwarfs the whole concept of big. We're part of this thing, and so we might as well go along with it because actually that's the only way we're going to ever find true joy and true comfort. It seems like a good deal to me. So I'm going to be quiet for a moment or two. And if you've got comments or questions, but you're not Zooming or on the phone line, if you're watching this or listening to this you know, 20 years from now or the other side of the moon, you can just sort of beam them at me. So I'll just be silent for a moment and then see where we take off from there. We're in the process of the Spark of Humanity Network project, whole project here, and Living Mosaic is part of it. We're going to be putting out a website about the, this evolutionary surge and how we think about it and conceptualize it and run with it. And we've got living mosaic where we have a sense of where we belong and where we're needed and where we can be part of the solution so we're not feeling so battered and buffled and buffaloed. Um, and, and so we can accept the fact that this change is going on. And then there's the Spark of Humanity network process itself, which is a way that we are offering, it's not the only way. 
there, I don't know how many ways there are, but there are a lot of them, I'm sure. But it's a way we offer to help each other become more available to this evolutionary surge to this power. It helps us become available to being ad adapted, to adaptation. And that the spark process is very simple. And thank heavens I only do these every couple of weeks, right? Because it can be pretty repetitive, but I figure that you know, it bears repetition. That it's, I locate my spark. And somewhere within this information event with which I identify, I locate my spark. And through it, I connect with and affirm your spark. And that strengthens your spark. It also strengthens my spark. It seems that, this is in the spark literature, our early, early literature, it seems that the strengthened spark acts to erode the defenses, because we all have defenses, clarify the bafflement, because the defenses are developed in response to our bafflement because we don't know what to do. We came out of the womb and how do we cope? This is very big and very bright and there are all these big things going around making noises. How do I survive here? Bafflement. And when we let down the defenses, when the defenses erode, then our bafflement becomes clarified. Oh, my spark cannot be extinguished. It cannot be polluted. It cannot be corrupted. Its integrity is indestructible. That's our spark. It may not be any other part, or it may not be any part with which we identify, but our spark is incorruptible. And once we get it, that our spark is incorruptible, we can begin to release our distortions. Our distortions are the coping mechanisms we developed because of our bafflement. I think if I always smile this way, they keep feeding me, so I'm going to keep smiling this way because I need to be fed. You know, I'm never going to laugh at their jokes because, you know, bad happens when I laugh at their jokes. Whatever, we have developed these distortions of response because of our bafflement. And usually they're self-protective distortions. So once we get it that our spark is safe and we are safe, we are essentially safe, life is essentially safe for our sparks. It's not safe for our defenses, our distortions, or our bafflement. No, life is not safe for those things. But for us, for our true self, it's safe. So then we're willing to let go of our distortions. So through that process, we become more available to this force that's wanting to adapt us, wanting our adaptation so that we continue to be a vibrant part of this, the human enterprise on planet Earth. So thank you for joining us. The change shifts, shifts the consciousness. Thank you for joining us. want to remind you that we are on Facebook. And we'll not be doing another live shoot until the 22nd because of summer schedules that got joggled around. And that will be about hope a variety of facets of hope. So meanwhile, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing and being with you again. And thanks, as always, to Orca Media and the team that puts this on. Thank you. <laughs>